Hey, welcome to my fitness assessment project for KIN 739, where I investigate the NFL Scouting Combine. Every February, hundreds of the best collegiate football players are invited to show scouts, coaches, and NFL team owners what they're made of. Think of it as a four-day job interview with a major focus orienting around the, testing the athlete's physical abilities and football-related skills. The athletes are subjected to physical assessments that are designed to test the athlete's strength, power, muscular endurance, and agility relating to the physical aspects of the NFL. All athletes will compete in six common events, the 40-yard dash, bench press, vertical jump, broad jump, three-cone drill, and two shuttle runs, 5-10-5 and 10-20-10. 40-yard dash is the marquee event demonstrating raw speed of the athlete. The fastest time creates bragging rights among the group of athletes and the league. While this test mainly measures speed, the first 10 yards are used to measure explosive start of the athlete, which is essential to many positions within football. The times are recorded at three distances along the event, 10, 20, and 40 yards, which are measured of the athlete's average speed to cover those distances. Times are recorded both electronically and manually, and scouts assess the long speed, which is the 40-yard time, and the short explosive speed, which is the 10-yard time. Chris Johnson, running back out of East Carolina, holds the record with a 4.24 second run in 2008. Let's watch an example. Clowney's 40. Now the average 40 for a defensive end last year was 4.77. So 4.47 seven would be above average. <laughs> That's his now when we talk about Chris Johnson and 424, to me that's a more impressive number. A 270 pound man running 447 unofficially is more impressive to me than a 200 pounder running 424. That, that's crazy right there. That's just flat out crazy. Now the bench press is another bragging rights test in which the athletes are required to bench 225 pounds for as many reps as possible. This test measures both the athlete's muscular strength and muscular endurance. For a rep to count as a good rep, the barbell must come and touch the chest of the athlete with the athlete's arm locking out at the top of the movement. The athletes are not allowed to bow their backs, nor are they allowed to bounce the barbell off the chest. The event allows the scouts to assess the athlete's dedication to the weight room over the, their collegiate career by how many times they can lift the 225 pounds. Steven Paya, which you will watch shortly, is a defensive lineman at Oregon State who holds the record of 49 reps in 2011. And in John Lott's weight and reps room yesterday, Stephen Paya did this. And it, we'll just listen to it. You can hear not only the exhortations of John Lott, but also the camaraderie, not only from the players, but Take a look at the coaches in the stands, too, as Pyle was aiming for the all-time, or since 2000 record, of 45 reps of 225. Now we have the vertical drop, which is a measure of lower body, explosion, and power. The athletes are allowed to perform a counter movement jump to incorporate the stretch reflex in order to cock and load the muscle groups of the lower extremity. The jump is measured using a vertex vertical jump tester and is classed as a distance from the bottom rung touch to the tip of the fingers. Each athlete is allowed three attempts and the best of the three counts. Donald Washington, cornerback from Ohio State, holds the record of 45 inches in 2009. The vertical jump is very similar to the broad jump in that it's going to test how strong you are with that lower body and those big muscles. Now, some people naturally just jump high. 
God-given, a natural God-given ability to jump. But I think what it also tests for a lot of coaches and scouts is how often you're in the weight room squatting and doing all those important lower bodies because you can really elevate your vertical jump if you work hard at it. So what they do is they measure you with a flat-footed reach, okay? They're not going to let you cheat with your feet. You get your hand up as high as it can go, and at that point, they're going to mark it. Now, the differential between that mark and whatever flag they hit after they jump is your vertical jump. Now, remember, no rocker steps, no cheating. They really make you just lock in there, bend, and elevate. And it's kind of fun to watch some of these guys get up. And I always love the D-backs and the wideouts because they sky. They average about 40 in inches. Now, the stadium broad jump was designed to test the athlete's lower body explosive power and strength while incorporating balance and core strength. Athletes are to begin in a static position and explode horizontally. The key to a successful jump is the landing. Jumps only count if the athlete can stick it. The test is designed this way because football is a game of precision and the athlete must be able to hit their mark. A good jump is one that is 10 feet or more. Jamie Collins, which you'll watch shortly, is an outside linebacker from Southern Mississippi. He holds a record of 11 feet, 7 inches, which was in 2013. Collins, just a moment ago, I enjoyed watching this kid on tape. <laughs> I mean, the thing only goes to 12. 11-7! He stuck it. Oh, man. The three cone drill has replaced many of the cone drills of the past. This drill measures the athlete's explosion, speed, and agility. The three cones create an L shape separated by five yards. Jeff Mao, wide receiver of Oregon, holds a record of 6.42 seconds, which was in 2011. The test begins with the athlete in three point stance, sprints to the first line five yards out. Touches the line, pivots, and sprints back to the start line. After again touching the line, the athlete pivots, sprints back around the cone to the top cone, which is the top of the L. As the athlete rounds the cone, they are stayed low to the ground and pivot around and return back to the start line, finishing the L shape. The object of this test is to be able to keep your center of mass low to the ground while exploding around a player or an opponent, as in defensive linemen, outside linebackers and defensive end as they are pursuing the quarterback or other football carriers. The final of the six core physical assessments is a shuttle run. There are two distances, the 5, 10, 5, and the 10, 20, 10 yard runs. They are both oriented the same. The event is designed to measure the athlete's lateral quickness and explosiveness in short areas. The 5-10-5 shuttle run record is held by Jason Allen, cornerback of Tennessee, with a 3.81 seconds in 2008. The 10-20-10 shuttle record is held by Brendan Cook, wide receiver of Oregon State, which he ran in 2014 at a 10.72 second run. For both shuttle runs, the athlete starts in the center, Sprints laterally to one side where they touch the line with the outside hand, maybe the right or the left. The athlete then stops, returns into the opposite direction 10 or 20 yards to the opposite line. They then touch that line with the outside hand. And then they sprint back across the finish, which is the same line in which they started. The goal of the object is to stay low to the ground and create that line through the center mass and the line as you see here. That creates a great explosion back to the other lines. The assessment is judging your ability to quickly stop and get up to speed quickly in the opposite direction. The remaining of the four-day interview is a combination of flexibility measures, which they take, as you see here in the picture, uh, manually, and they also use a Cybex tester to test the joints, ligaments, and tendons and the flexibility of each of the athletes. Additionally, each athlete will be put through a barrage of physical assessments that are specific to their position within the football skill set. Interviews and psych testing are also conducted to make sure the athlete is somebody that they think would fit in perfectly with their program.
So thank you for listening to my presentation. And as you can see, the NFL uses a wide variety of physical assessments to adjust multiple aspects of their athletes' physical abilities to judge whether or not these athletes will be prepared to handle the grueling physical nature of the NFL and pro football.